The Small Business Show, episode 332 for Wednesday, June 16th, 2021. <music> Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show where, well, we like to small business. That's right. We treat it as a verb because we think action is the key to small business success here in Durham. Da <laughs> I'm tired today here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I am Shannon Jean. See, I tried to How be efficient. You? I just tried to say here in Durham, Dave Hamilton. <laughs> there you go. You just cut it out. You saved your being more productive. I was trying you know. to be more productive. You know yeah, what I was no. going to say, folks. I was just going to yeah. I was just going to save you time. That's it. Hey, did you notice that we got a new logo? I we did notice that we got we a new logo. We haven't talked about that on the, on the I show. I love but, our new uh, logo. Yeah, <laughs> I man. do, too. I do, too. It's, uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, just go to businessshow.co, and up in the left corner, you can uh, you can take a look at it. Love to hear what you think about it. We tried to put a little uh, you know, humor in it, a little, you know, some imagery of Dave and I, and I will now f never age again. And, no, that's uh, <laughs> the beauty of those things. That's <laughs> yeah, the point. Exactly. That's right. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's cool. But hey, today, uh, as I mentioned before we got started here, I I'd love to talk about uh, a concept. You know, we talk about adding value a lot here on the show. Yeah. And today I really want to talk about the power of reciprocity. And using it as a persuasion technique, uh, you know, kind of some standardized methods that we're probably all familiar with. And then also a few ways that I've used it that are different, but uh, can bring you some really positive results. All right. So, yeah, I, I don't really know. I mean, I understand the word reciprocity. I know what reciprocal means, but I'm I'm eager to learn here. So educate me, please. Yeah. So the, the basic concept is, you know, uh, of this uh, concept of reciprocity is that when you do something for someone, there is this built in trigger that they feel compelled to do something for you. Right? I love that. And I leverage that all the time. Of course, we all do. And it can be used in kind of <laughs> nefarious ways. It is leveraged ways. against me all the time, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and basically, from a business standpoint, you know, you're giving away something of value to them before they place an order, before they're anything, you know, uh, and, and it's very common. You know, it, it, it's a powerful persuasion technique, and it helps attract new people to your, you know, new customers to your business. Um, and, but... I, I, I kind of have a different take on it, but first let, let's talk about these kind of typical sales and marketing examples, and then we'll jump into kind of this sideways look at it. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So, you know, have you ever been to Costco? Uh, I love going to Costco. You know what? I especially so love I. going on the weekends because they have all those free samples. Yeah. And hey, good news. Uh, those free samples are coming back in this month in June. They've oh, been away for a while. Right. So uh, free samples are part of the secret sauce of Costco. And uh, we've, I've got a link that we'll put in the show notes that some brands have increased their sales as much as 2000% by offering free samples at Costco. I believe and that. I, I mean, do. It, well, it, it makes sense. I, I, if you had told me that outside of the confines of a conversation about reciprocity, I would have said, well, of course, because uh, yeah. if I don't know anything about the brand and I have the opportunity to sample it, I, I have a taste. I like it. It's right there. I put it in my cart. Right. So it's yep. the exposure to it is one part, but then you're right. There is that. Do you feel guilted into buying it because you just had some for free? Maybe that's part of it too. Yeah, I don't know if guilt. Is yeah, I, I'm the, using but, a, a word of a term yeah. of efficiency. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's there's some trigger inside of us. I think that, uh, and I have felt it when I go up. I feel like, oh, thank you so much, and I, I, I just feel like, okay, now, I, where, where, and I, I've often found myself, oh, where are these sold at? <laughs> Even yeah. if I have no intention, if you have no intention, them. right? You oh, lead them. To, you, know. you, you think you're leading them to believe you're going to buy it, even yeah. though they know. Yeah. Even though the, you're the 500th person to ask them that question. That's a stupid in, in, question. You know, yeah. Last yeah, that's stupid. That's okay, sir. You can have the free cupcake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever. Just take the cupcake, dude. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, you know, so that kind of example and, you know, other things, if you go into places and they may have like a candy dish at the, at the uh, thing. And, and there are studies that even show that waiters that bring 
you know, mints or restaurants that offer a mint with the check and some wait staff may do if the if the restaurant doesn't do it, they bring the mints. Hey, I'm going to I'm going to put these mints out with the bill because it in, it's been shown to increase the uh, amount of the tip because the customer is getting something, you know, they, they intrinsically didn't pay for it. And uh, there's that concept of reciprocity. So free samples, very, very powerful. Um, and then also another one I think we're probably all familiar with is free content, right? A free report, uh, a guide, you know, if, if you go on the Lowe's website or Home Depot, there's all these, you know, in guides and manuals to do things. Uh, you don't have to buy anything to get it, but they're, right. you're getting it with the cons. Okay. You're going to come back here and maybe buy paint or, or tools or something like that. Sure. Um, one of them that I really love is a company I've talked about a lot on the show over the years is Help Scout. I've used them at various, uh, you know, my businesses and, they their focus is on teaching great customer service and they have a whole learning section up on their website and they make a, a you know a, a software as a surface a service that's all yeah. about customer service and email yeah. and everything and it's gr- it's just a great product but if you go up and again we'll put the the link up there they've got you know some courses that they give you free access to you just have to enter your email and, you know, one of them is Foundations of Great Service. And it's just a, a valuable thing. And they, they present it as a valuable thing. Even when you sign up, it says $99 value. And they describe it, the six-part course that you're going to go through. And uh, it, it's powerful. And it's free. And it connects you with them on a different level than if you're just reading about uh, using the service. Right. Um and, huh. and, and I love it. I love it. And and so and then the, so you know free things at your store. Maybe people coming in. Uh, maybe you're giving away pens. Maybe you're doing you know whatever. I I listen to Scott Adams all the time. He's a yep. big persuasion persuasion guy. His trick used to be at meetings he would hand out uh, hand to the first person a little uh, container of Tic Tacs and tell everybody to pass it around and take one. And it was the first thing he did. And it did two things. One, he was giving them something right. for the reciprocity. But the other thing is he asked them to do it and they did it, which is a real big physically. If you oh. do something, it's a big persuasion technique uh, that gets buy in with your, you know, with your, uh, your people you're talking to. What a uh, one great of the things- idea. I want to, I, I won't be allowed to because of, I'm sure there'll be more COVID restrictions in the fall <laughs> at, at, well, at the university of New Hampshire where yeah. I teach that class, but that's the kind of thing I would want to do is give them some reason to interact Right. Yes, and and be that's active. It. Like, oh, we're going to pass this thing around. Do you have it? Do yeah. I have it? You know, yeah. where is it? What is it that like? And, and the fact that it's a Tic Tac and it's sweet and, and you're actually giving people a little bit of sugar to get, yeah. them, you know, Smart. into things <laughs> like, like there's a lot to unpack there in that little Tic Tac that everybody's passing around. But yep. that's huge. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. And he's taking it a step because he does this, you know, online, this podcast every day, but he live streams it. And he does a thing at the beginning called the simultaneous sip Yeah, where he gets all the people that listen. He says, okay, you ready? And he gets a little spiel and supposedly everybody's listening and he gets a huge uh, quantity of people in this live stream. Everybody picks up their cup and has a drink of something. And it's for the same reason as the Tic Tac. You know, he can't give out something, but he's getting you to do something. We're all in this together. Yeah, you're, um, you're participating. Yeah, yeah partic- participating. That's real. That's really good. Yeah. So, think about those things. You know, and, and I, you know, these are things we're all familiar with. But what's something you know unique that you could offer your customers? You know, it, giving away something adds value, increases this emotional connection that you have. Uh, to prospective customers. And so I think I really believe that you need to make this part of your marketing budget um, and think about how you could uniquely, uh, you know, approach it with your product or service that you're selling. Um, I think you'll have some success. Uh, No, this is, yeah, this is great. We'll have to come up with some ideas to, uh, to, to, you you know, to, to do this kind of thing. Cause it, you're right. It, as soon as you get, as soon as you give someone something or taking it, to the other side, as soon as you get something from someone, you're engaged, you're building trust, Different. right? Yeah. Like there's so Got many it. things that are, ha- like you said, it's, it's a core part of, it touches a core part of us as humans, 
when something like that happens. And, yeah. and that that's the key, right? Like I always talk about how how important it is to build trust with customers and vendors and things like that. And one of the thing I, I'm always looking for shortcuts, right? Th- things to accelerate the process, not things to shortcut might have the wrong connotation, but ways to sure. accelerate the trust building process. And one of the things that I found that accelerates trust building is having a problem and then solving it right now. You don't necessarily want to intentionally create problems. I certainly don't, but if there is some sort of friction and you can get past it together, that yeah. accelerates trust building in a huge it way. Does. Right. It does. But, but you can't plan on that. And it also, like I said, you, you probably don't want to get into the uh, habit of creating problems simply for this, because then it won't be sincere and you probably winds up backfiring. But this you could do sincerely and yeah, and but maybe, maybe there's a, about it. yeah, yeah, maybe maybe with your business there's some common or, or you know people you're interacting with there's some common problem that you could think of like hey if I give away this widget this gadget whatever it is this will this will solve that little problem yeah. that people have that's true uh, that's a know, different maybe, way of looking at it yeah 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 maybe yeah. you could do some maybe it's the magnet even though I don't know people keep magnets on their fridge anymore but maybe something you know like that like a, a big uh, we had a sponsor recently i think it was a comet to where they yeah. you know they do air fresheners in all different sizes so maybe you give away that little air freshener people can hang in their car but maybe it's your logo you know or That's something right. I, you know that, yeah. that kind of thing yeah, um, I think it's great. So the challenge for us now that you mentioned we should give some examples is, you know, we've got some interviews coming up, um, but within the next few episodes, we will come up with a free item that our listeners can get and uh, we'll let you know what it is. And we'll let you know what it is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 All right. Cool. Awesome. I like it. Speaking of uh, free things that you can get. I would like to tell everybody about our uh, sponsor for this episode, if, uh, if now's a good time, Shannon. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Hey, let me ask you a couple of questions. How do you handle an employee that doesn't show up to work? Can you dock an exempt employee's pay? Do you have to accommodate an employee who can't do their job? Do you know the answers to all these questions? I don't think I do. And that's because when running a business, HR issues can kill you. Wrongful termination suits, minimum wage requirements, labor regulations... And HR manager salaries aren't cheap, about an average of 70 grand a year. Well, our sponsor, Bambi, spelled B-A-M-B-E-E, was created specifically for us small business owners. You can get a dedicated HR manager, craft your HR policy, and maintain your compliance all for just $99 a month. With Bambi, you can change HR from your biggest liability to your biggest strength. Your dedicated HR manager is available by phone, email, or real-time chat. And from onboarding to terminations, they customize your policies to fit your business and help you manage your employees day to day all for just $99 a month, month to month, no hidden fees, cancel anytime. Listen, we didn't start our businesses because we wanted to spend time on HR compliance. So let's let Bambi help and get your free HR audit today. Go to Bambi.com slash small right now to schedule your free HR audit. That's Bambi.com slash small spelled BAM to the B-E-E dot com slash small. Our thanks to Bambi for sponsoring this episode. What's next, Shannon? Dude, I wish I had something like that 20 years ago. Dude, right? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I can't. I know. Great. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, just, I just think of all these things when you started asking these questions. I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. The answers. <laughs> I know. It's I crazy, it. man. It. Yep. It's awesome. It's a great time to own a business. Let me tell you, there's so many great resources out there that weren't there, you know, a long time ago. Isn't that um, the truth, man? It really like, is. It, it, <laughs> it, like, yeah, look at it, even just the, the sa- small sample of services that we have had on this show as sponsors over the last six plus years, right? Yeah. All, any one of those things has been like, oh man, I wish I had that. I wish I hiring uh, graphic arts, right. HR people, accounting people that, that uh, services that are, you know, so economical and so valuable. To hiring you, uh, services. Uh, like, I mean, yeah. so yeah. much stuff. I know it's crazy. Big deal. Yeah. Big it deal. it is right. a big deal. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. So, so let's, let's talk about, using reciprocity in different ways. And, I, and I've got a few examples and I'd love your feedback along the way as well. Of sure. course, Dave, uh, one of the first ones is I, I've used reciprocity to find suppliers 
for product that I want to sell. And, and I'll give you an ex- yeah, yeah, I'll give I you an example. Yeah, I want to hear about this. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if, a few years ago, I, I, I talked about on the show, I was going to start this experiment, see if I could, you know, start a company just using my phone. And I, I started this, you know, after researching, looking around, okay, I'm going to get into the handbag business. And so I know nothing about this business at all. I know nothing about fashion. You could tell if you could see what I'm wearing. And, uh, but I understand the Delta between the buy and the sell, that kind of thing. So I started calling and getting, trying to make connections for, you know, suppliers. And I just kept hearing the same thing. I don't have anything I could sell you. You know, there's just no, no way, you know, I'm trying to sell to, you know, huge companies, this, but I started to hear, well, I have, I have this I could sell you junk, basically, uh, stuff that's piling up that I can't sell to anybody else. Product that they were more like more than likely going to wind up disposing. And I finally I, I called these people and I said, look, how, I, let me help you turn that into a revenue stream. Uh, something that was, you know, a cost center before. Um, so in the beginning, they didn't think I, it was real. No, we can't sell it because it's all these problems and this. And I said, look, I will make this stuff go away. I don't if you wanted to go outside the U.S., if you wanted to stay in the U.S., if you want you tell me what the parameters are and I will buy it. Knowing in the back of my head that even if I had to throw this stuff away uh, myself uh, or donate it, I was going to make that connection and get that reciprocity going. So I started buying their, buying their junk and a, a, a lot of it. And I really kind of looked at it as an investment because it was the only way I could figure out how to get connections with this kind of business that I yep. knew nothing about. I, I'm from the tech world, right? I could yep. talk to, you know, I know how to buy, you know, computers and parts and that kind of stuff, but nothing about this. So after a while, I started to get this relationship with these, with these people. And then they offered, because I think they felt bad, uh, they said, Hey, I I think I could probably pull you off a small amount of this or this, you know, grade B product or something like that. And I started buying the other conditions that they had, not just their garbage, not just their trash. And I still buy their junk to this day, but I sell it at cost to somebody else. I don't, and I, and I focus on the higher quality product that I buy from them now. And I use that tactic over and over once I made that connection with one supplier and it, and it worked out great. And, And I think that to your point, Dave, I'm solving a problem that they had and yeah. they kept building up this product. They didn't want to write it off because their department is going to take a, a hit. Right. And by going in and saying, let me buy this stuff and not arguing about the cost at that time, because it didn't matter. Yeah, Cause you were, and, you were just making an investment in the future of your business. You weren't actually yeah. looking to get this stuff for the best price or well, no, whatever. It, right. Like it didn't, yeah, yeah. as long as it wasn't ridiculous, it didn't matter. Yes. So you're yeah. making me sound smart. You're making me feel smart here and I'll make myself <laughs> sound smart. Um, or at least attempt to. Yeah. <laughs> Although if the intro of the show is any indication, yeah. I probably should quit while I'm ahead. Uh, Usually when people say that, you're like, uh-oh. Uh-oh, yeah, here it comes. <laughs> well, y- y- you know, I I would have come into this episode, I did come into this episode saying I don't know anything about reciprocity. Uh, however, as you were describing this most recent uh, thing where you were buying junk from people, solving a problem that they had, when we decided to expand backbeat media. And this is, you know, 16, 15 years ago, maybe uh, when we decided to expand from just representing websites into representing podcasts, I needed, there were, you know, not nearly as many podcasts around then as there are now. And there were some key players in the industry that I needed on my side and I did not know them. At all. They didn't know me, more importantly. Now, I probably could have told him, hey, I'm Dave from Mac Observer. That name may have rung a bell, you, you know, but but like that's not enough. And so we had launched a new site at the time that we've since unlaunched. Well, we really sort of folded it back in. But we launched a site, a sub site called iPod Observer right about that same time. OK. And I thought, OK, great. I'll go to these people and buy ads from them, whatever their price is. I, I want to find out how you're doing your ads on your podcast. And I want to give you a little bit money, bit of money to find that out. And so I would, I bought like, you know, three ads on, on each of, I don't know, four or five shows and, and, and had the ads run and all of that stuff. 
and engaged with the people during the process and then said, hey, you know, I think you're undercharging for your ads. Uh, you know, we've been selling some ads here at Backbeat is kind of an experiment. Uh, you know, we've been doing the web thing, obviously, for a long time. We know what we're doing there. Yeah, yeah. We're experimenting with the podcast thing, but I'm finding that we could probably, even if we took a cut, we'd still give you more than you charged me. And, you know, nice. but they trusted me when I said this because I'd already given them money. Right. Like, yeah. so, so it really was this concept of reciprocity. You're right. Right. Um, and I'm to this day, I'm very thankful that I, however the idea came to me, I don't know if I can take credit for it or not, but however the idea Brilliant. came, I, I'm glad we Im implemented it uh, because I think it really did pave the path for us to do what we are currently doing today. So. Yeah, and that and that willingness to go give someone else something in your, that case money, mm -hmm. right? For you to learn, it's, you're, it's tuition, right? It was we always tuition. talk about that. It was, yeah. but it was also yeah. buying a little loyalty. I mean, to yes, be perfectly that's honest, right. yeah. you know, it's, but that's fine. It's, it's yeah. a great example of of what I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, it, you know, a, a, a quick side on suppliers. One of the things that we, you know, we, we I got shipments for years and years and years from all kinds of different suppliers all over the world, and sometimes they would ship like the wrong stuff or extra stuff. And sometimes, my, you know, our, our uh, warehouse guys who check things in would say, wow, man, we just we got an extra 20 pieces of this. And I say, oh, the first thing we're going to do is go back and tell them they shipped us 20 extra. Well, wait, well, well I, you know, I often look, look at me like, well, why would you do that? Because those are free. And I said, no, no, watch. And it's the same reciprocities yeah. that you're building that trust. You're like, hey, guys, you overshipped me. Because the next time when they screw up, they're totally going to believe me if something goes wrong because you, you're you telling them when they made a mistake uh, in our favor. Yeah. And we want to step up and, and make it right. And it's a similar kind of thing, building trust and credibility. I'll never forget the first time. Two in the morning, finished a gig, bar owner pays the band, you know, and uh, I count the money. Now, normally I count the money at the bar with the person right in front of me so that like, okay. no, n never once did the money leave their sight because sometimes more often than not, it's short. Right. And so <laughs> right. to come back and say, oh, I went in the other room and counted the money and came back and found it was short. Like that can be a little weird. Well, this one time. Uh, one of the other guys had gone and gotten the money and I'm like, did you count it in front of him? And they're like, no, I just grabbed the check or I grabbed the envelope. And I'm like, okay, yeah. okay, fine. D d you know, I told them never do that again. Here's why. And they're like, Ooh, I did never thought of it that way. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Great. So I opened the envelope and there was an extra 50 bucks in there. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, so it was, it was probably a $500 gig. So it was 10% extra. And sure. I, I said, I counted it again. I asked my bandmate to count it. I'm like, am I getting this wrong? Like, no, it's, it's five fifty. So we went up back to the thing and I told the guy, he's like, Oh, is there something wrong? I said, yeah. Uh, I said, there's an extra 50 in here. And he stopped. He's like, wait, say that again. And I said, there, th like you owe us 500. He's like, right. I said, there's five fifty in here. He's like, you're telling me that I'm overpaying you. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like the how I know it's yeah. late, but like, I, this should be pretty clear what I'm telling. He says, this doesn't make any sense to me. He says, I I've never had someone do that before. And I'm like, well, we agreed on a certain price. If it was short, I'd have come to you. So yeah, I'm coming to you because it's, it's heavy. And, Powerful, uh, and he was like, I guarantee you, this is the first and last time this is ever going to happen to me. Like he was just flabbergasted. That, that, you know, so a musician at two in the morning wasn't just going to take the extra 50 and run. And uh, and he, he at that point, actually, he told us, he's like, you know what? Keep it. You're good. He's like, thank you. Yeah, he's that's like, you made my night. I'm like, OK, yeah, perfect. That's right. Like, what's the calendar look like for getting on next month and the month after? Like, you know, let's yeah. let's you're, leverage you're this into something. Right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. it's leverage. You're right. You're yep. right. It's the right thing to do, of course. It, is. But it also gives you some leverage and and makes you stand out amongst uh, other people that are buying. Absolutely. Uh, and are doing doing things. So, yeah, oh, that's cool. Yep. I have two more examples. One is going to be we're going to talk about employees at the at the end, which I, I okay. have a really interesting take on it. But first. I, I want to talk about reciprocity and partnerships. And, and what I mean, a, a really loose interpretation of that word partnerships. I, I mean, like anybody that helps your business. And, and my example is, again, with this, this experimental handbag business, when I began selling on some of these fashion marketplaces, you know, I, I didn't know anything about it. And I, like, one of the marketplaces I started selling on was Poshmark. And as I started using it, I just realized, you know, they have created this for end users to sell their own stuff. 
and not for a business mm. to be prod- productive and to, to use it and build volume and sell that kind of stuff. Uh, and I, I started to write down and create a list of ways that it could work better for small business sellers and, and that, that they can improve the platform, you know, for businesses like me. And this is basic stuff that for me, Oh, I need a sales report. I need a field to enter a SKU. I mean, they just did not have this. And so after I had about a dozen of those things, I wrote a, a, a quick one page report and I sent it to them, you know, oh, yeah. and I just like, Hey, I love you guys. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm having some impact I'm growing this business here. Uh, it's all an experiment. And so before you, next thing you know, I got a phone call and I got invited to come out to their headquarters and talk to That's them. Awesome. And <laughs> yeah, it was great. And, and, you know, uh, I, I'm sure, especially with my name, they were expecting, you know, cause I always put pictures of myself with my wife in that business yes. as a persuasion Smart. technique Smart because move. it's a primary yeah, female driven, uh, marketplace. Sure. And I'm sure they were surprised when I picked up the phone and like, hello, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. this kind of thing. <laughs> so I get to the headquarters, I, I, you know, I get to meet their CEO really solidified my relationship with them, you know, and now they've implemented a lot of the things that, uh, I asked them to do. Uh, I, I talk to their executives and their employees all the time. I get early access uh, to test new features for business sellers, uh, and it's great. And I, I've spoken at their event, a number of their events, and I got invited to participate when they did their IPO. So just because I kept this little list of things like, this is driving me crazy. You know, I don't have a skew, and how do I keep track of it? And I sent it to them. They felt compelled to you know, reciprocate to me to help my business and, uh, in many ways. Okay. So it, it, I, 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 uh, I, I think you were done with what you were saying, right? I am done with okay, that part of it. With yes. that part of it. Yeah. So that list, those kinds of lists are super powerful. I highly recommend you make them. If you are working with a vendor that is, you know, doing some things for your business, but you could, you know, come up with some suggestions to help them improve, make that list. And if you like the vendor and you believe that they could implement it, send it to them. Yep. If they don't, or if you don't believe that they would and you won't send it to them, stop and think and ask yourself, is this a business I want to be in? Because I guarantee you if there are, if you are coming up with this list of things that frustrate you, the friction points, there are other customers of theirs that have those exact same friction points, even if they couldn't articulate them to themselves as well as maybe you have to yourself. And that can be the business plan for your next venture. And I say that because that's how backbeat media started. Yeah, that's great. We, we had, we, great we were tip. partners with the Mac addict network. They, they flew us out. I was complaining. I, I was making the list. I sent them the list. They invited me out to meet with their CEO and, and, you know, we did like a two day long summit sharing all these things. I kept all my notes from the summit two months later and not a thing had changed. And I called the other partners that were there that were literally part of this conversation. And I'm like, we're going to do this on our own. You want to join us? And they're like, yeah, those guys haven't done anything since that conversation, but you seem to have all these great ideas. It's like, perfect. Here we go. <laughs> so save those lists. They might just come in handy down the road. <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant, man. Yep. That's a great advice. Yep. That's great advice. All right. So, my, the last part that I used, I have used reciprocity frequently is related to uh, employees, people that have worked for me. And sure. I've talked about this a little bit on the show, but I want to highlight how, how I've used it. it. You know, all of us know it, how important it is to build trust and, and to be credible with your employees, whether your business and for yourself, right? And you're going to attract the best employees. And one day, one way that I've done this and we've done it with, you know, various businesses was to let these people know and it could be right when you hire them, but it's also kind of during their career when they're with your company, um, is that we wanted to help them learn new things and advance their careers, even to the point where they might leave and go work for somebody else after they've hit a certain plateau or one that got interested in something else. But the fact that you're discussing them and that you have a sincere interest in seeing them learn they're going to be a better employee. They're more invested personally in the work that they do. They're more loyal to you. And they, they felt a much greater sense of ownership about the work that they did. Because 
it was just in our culture that we're like, great, hey, we want to get these certifications. And I, I would always say, it, this is going to help you for your rest of your career, whether you work for us or not. And, you know, we'll pay for these things and you get your Apple certification, your A plus certification. What else do you want to do? How can we help you, you know, learn more in turn? It helps us. But uh, that constant message is is really powerful. Yeah. And uh, I've seen it work over and over. Yeah. And, and I, I need know, to be better about that. This is good advice. Yeah. It works. It really works. And and I love doing it because you see people just grow. I mean, we've had a lot of young guys. We we hired right out of our internship program uh, in at, at tech at Mac Rescue and a tech restore. And you know, you could just see these. Uh, it's kind of a cliche, I guess, but they kind of bloom. You know, as they come on, they don't talk very much and they're kind of timid and quiet. But over time, over years, you just watch them develop into just a just such a great person and they take on more roles in your organization. They become supervisors, they become managers, uh, you know, and that, that's a person eventually you could sell your business to when you were ready. That's right. Uh, and, yeah. and those conversations are really powerful to have to them because they're not usually getting those messages. And, and I would encourage you to have them. And, and I think the takeaway here is that when you and your company give first, you create this reciprocal connection, you know, whether it's with your employees, like I've just described, whether it's your suppliers, your customers, or your partners. And for me, the, the, I'll leave you with this, you know, give as if you don't expect anything in return and you will be richly rewarded. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, it really works. And, you know, it doesn't work with everybody, but it works with enough people that you're going to build this big network around you of people that have your self-interest uh, in mind and are always, you know, willing to help you. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's my, yeah, that's my take on reciprocity. And, you know, if you have examples, we would love to hear about it. Feedback at businessshow.co. Tell me what I missed, what we got wrong. And... Be sure to stick around because we're going to have something uh, to give to you pretty quick awesome. here on the small business. That's show. right. Yeah, it's true. I know. I'm excited about this one. So Me too. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for listening, folks. Shannon, thank you for educating uh, us. Oh, uh, me, you too. I, all our yeah. listeners. This is great, man. This is, I, I love this episode. So I, I really feel like I'm the one that learned the most today. So this is good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You never know. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It I, there's no forth. guarantee that I actually will retain any of this. So, <laughs> yeah. you know. You have to you listen go. to it over and over. Right? That's right. That's yeah. Right. And I do that by going to businessshow.co. That's, that's where I go to listen to the show. Businessshow.co. There's three S's in the middle right there it's it's just it's i like it, it, it like i for some reason I, I really like the business show.co like when i look at the url it's good i don't know and you can send us email feedback at business show.co so yeah thanks for listening folks make sure to check out bambi.com slash small to schedule your free hr audit right see reciprocity and uh keep living that charmed life see you next week